2020 permanently ruined the way anyone looks at commentary YouTubers' videos. Prism ate Lucas running around spreading misinformation all over Tomato Town. The PS5 was just released and was nearly impossible to find, and you know that one other event that was a super big deal and caused everyone a lot of stress? The Hopeless Peaches drop. Quarantine! I sure do love being inside. Anyway, here is the dumbass lizard. Not that one, this one. <laughs> Know your f***ing place, trash! This would be the part where I start pretending that the people watching this video have no idea who Spockter is because my most popular videos are the ones about the Peaches drama and some people involved in the Peaches drama. I made so much money off those videos, by the way. Spockter is someone who I have never liked. Honestly, I don't really know why or what it was, but whatever it was, whether it was in or out of his video, I was just never a fan. I thought he was an asshole, but ended up being so much worse than I could have ever imagined. He was someone who painted himself as a calm, neutral person who was just making videos to clear the air and reach a middle ground. But in reality, he was just a coward who'd quickly run off to blame someone else whenever it was convenient for him. Or just lie about someone for PR, but we're a little too early for that one. This is the video title, we still haven't figured one out yet. But since this isn't your first time watching one of my videos, you should know the drill. Here is the percentage of people subscribed to me, and here is what your room is gonna look like if you don't subscribe. I'm gonna kill you. I have channel memberships if you really want to waste a dollar on earlier videos than there were, so there you go. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and Discord if you want to be based and drop a follow on both of those accounts, that'd be awesome sauce. Back to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Okay, so we've seen the length of this video and it's safe to say that I did not produce this one on my own. I actually got help for once. Hi, Lumens. Yo, yo, what's up, man? Do you want to make another Spock to video of me? Mm, no. I'll pay you. Hey there everyone, I'm Lin Lin, and it looks like we have bigger fish to fry. After spending a few years in the DeviantArt ranting community, Spockter would eventually move into more generalized commentary. But not too long after setting up shop in this dumpster fire that we call home, some of his coverage of situations seem to be lacking in a number of ways. Lacking in honesty, lacking in common sense, and lacking in human decency to name but a few. And on the note of creators treating each other like dirt for reasons that seem to have next to no logical consistency, the Hopeless Beaches drama! Yay! Either way, for those of you who are new to this, then good for you. You probably have enough experience touching grass to not be an utter gremlin like me. But just in case you're fine with me changing that, there was this drama called the Toby drama, and an art commentator called Hopeless Peaches was able to look at that situation and hold a nuanced stance. The sheer horror. And because a lot of the commentary community are probably too dumb to know how to spell the word nuance, prison mate Lukewarm IQ decided to have some, uh, choice words for her. And another person who commented was Hopeless Peaches, who also decided to put herself into the drama despite constantly saying how she doesn't want to be in it, and would just never leave it alone. And when people like Thumbin called her out for her terrible and biased behavior, she made a community post about how she wasn't friends with Toby, which I didn't actually know she wasn't friends with Toby, because she did everything in her power to defend her, and fail to fight Omnia so much that I thought she was. Because why go through all that hassle for someone you apparently don't even care about? Well, you say are you going to be taking a break from the drama and comments and all that, which is fine, if you need a break, you need one, I'm not saying you don't have mental health problems, but you would constantly come back to post more things than beg for sympathy, and when you were getting genuine criticism for all the garbage you've done, you decided to bait your audience, going off the grid for hours to make your audience worry that you're hurt or yourself, and guess what, two days later you were back to making treats again, and she's been doing this for a long time, it's very manipulative, and she's always using her mental health as a pity me card, which is funny since she called out Toby for doing the same thing. You're a donut! You're so stupid! You're so stupid! You're stupid! And these choice words showed Luke to be so desperate to have an argument that he actively withheld the benefit of doubt for no good reason and came to the conclusion that Peach's tweeting in regards to a self-deletion attempt was just her making people worry after getting criticism, presumably because she couldn't handle it. And from there, the situation would spread far and wide with people hopping on the bandwagon that became almost entirely comprised of misinformation. Now, during the 
the situation, Spockta would jump in to make a video that sought to take a look at the entire situation up to that point. Do you think that Spockta would take a stand, do the right thing, and do the situation justice? No. Peaches deserves criticism. Absolutely. Deserves criticism. And I, I don't believe that hate mob ne is necessary, though. I do realize the mob is a result of the publi publicity of the criticism that's being tossed around, um, and all the hurt that's being tossed around, and alongside her horrifically horrendous response to the drama. And if I'm being very, very clear here, that hurts me more than anything else that was said in this video. Anything else was fine. Because I did think we were close friends. But I'm almost entirely sure that a lot of the, the creators out here making videos on Peaches are doing it out of emotional impulse. And I can confidently place aside the content creators who I believe royally f things up, and content creators that I believe were just doing what they thought was right. And for those of you who are not caught up, Hopeless Peaches is under a lot of fire right now for uh, what I can gather being intensely bad at relationship management and emotional management. It's kind of odd to say that Omnia and Shannon were just doing what they thought was right, because it doesn't hold up to scrutiny at all. In the case of Omnia, I must say that you would have to be incredibly dense to genuinely believe that Omnia using Peach's grrrring thumbnail for their thumbnail, and blurring half a conversation in screenshots acting like it's concrete evidence, is them doing what they think is right. The level of copium you have to be on for something like that to even make any remote sense to you is freakishly high. But not as high as you would need to be to use that same grooming video while saying that Peaches is bad at relationship management, and it somehow gets worse. Peaches made a response, and her response was less than swell. It was a defense video when it should have been a reflection video, Peaches. I understand that Luke royally f***ed up with his call out on you, and I, I somewhat agree with that, but the others did not, and you put way too much focus on the wrongs of others when you should have also looked at yourself as well. It's a pattern people have seen. Someone upsets you, you run away. You vent the frustrations in an irresponsible way. Stop doing it. Stop that. You have a lot of real personal issues that you need to iron out with yourself before you consider making personal relationships with people in the community again. You need to find people that will like you for who you are. Someone that doesn't know you as Hopeless Peaches. I said this before, but you're absolutely broken as a person, and you don't know how to treat people well because of it. But why did you say this, Sparkta? Why is she broken as a person? Because people lied about her? Why does she need to stop tweeting because other people want to say that she's a s side beta? And don't get me wrong, dude. Tweeting very serious issues to your fans could easily cause problems. But Peaches did this because she had nowhere else to go. You should never have to hide away because other people are being ableist a Peaches herself said that she wasn't a saint during this whole drama, but this entire video is putting so much of the blame onto Peaches when it's just not. Sporkton knew this too. He had evidence to disprove a lot of the things, but PR is way more important, I guess. And what makes this video even worse is that even if we, for some reason, look beyond these major issues, which is a pretty tall order, I know, it still has a pretty glaring flaw. Its way of acting like the ways that the Peaches drama impacted her is something that she should have to bear the responsibility for. You, Peaches, need to stop using your platform as a venting ground, start treating it like a brand. How you're going about this is irresponsible at the least, an idiot at the most. It's not what you should be doing with your platform. She She's openly expressed her unhappiness with her portrayal of s baiting, to which I'd say just please stop posting to Twitter and using it to output so much emotional torment. It will cause you so many issues overall and will do more harm than good because there's thousands of people who might see that and twist it and get the wrong idea. I don't want to assume that you were s baiting, but I also want you to know that. It's s up for the people around you to make the Mori like that, to spread pain and fear like that, despite if you're planning on going through with it or not. And I know that might be a controversial opinion because it's very unpopular, but that's my personal beliefs. <laughs> So Spockta literally acknowledges that Peaches is unhappy with being portrayed as someone who baited self-termination and responds to it with, oh, just be quiet on the Funny Bird app. You do realize that this structure implies that Peaches tweeting too much is the reason she got that portrayal of herself, right? Because that is not something that you should be implying at all, given how the real cause of that was Luke interpreting events as uncharitably as he could for no reason. Yeah, how about we don't respond to the idea of Peaches being upset about something that other people are doing to her by trying to force a way to imply it's her fault in any way, because it isn't.
Shortly later, prison mate Luke releases a video titled Stop Lying Peaches on YouTube, where he paints peaches in a light that's extremely unfavorable. Very, very unfavorable. Um, he starts off by recapping what he said at the end of the Toby video, and then goes into depth about how Peaches lied about him, quote unquote. He exclaims that Peaches was furthering the drama by venting her, frust venting her frustrations out of her possibly inaccurate portrayal of her baiting, which she was obviously very over-emotional about. If this is where the drama ends, I'm willing to bite the bullet. But that's not where it ended. She kept going on about it. And Luke, I wouldn't argue she was furthering the drama. I would rather argue that she's extremely over-emotional about what you said in your video, which is definitely a fault on her end, and it's a, it's its own criticism. And I, I feel like she should have just tried to move past it calmly instead of being aggressively upset about it. Ah, yes, because I would also practice the teachings of the Buddha after someone called me a s side beta. I, look, I'm not even going to be sarcastic here, but Peaches is a better person than me because I wouldn't have even tried to be constructive when addressing Luke. I would have just shot a bunch of insults at the dude and probably told him to KYS. Even if Peaches was being overly emotional, why is that a problem? You acknowledge Luke was wrong. She has the right to be upset about something this serious. Funnily enough, this video wasn't an instance where Spockta got some pushback here. Not much, but he did get a response from a certain Harley TBS, a then up and coming commentator with nowhere near the following that Spockta had. And after some more of the drama played out after that, Spockta made another video on the matter. Was it any good? Nuh uh. Now that Spockta has the ability to set things right, will he? Okay, we, we obviously know he's not going to, okay? This meme is f dead now. Stuff like this isn't really easy to cover because there isn't really a bad guy, only bad actions. And, and that's prevalent throughout the entire situation. A multitude of good people making bad decisions, and those bad decisions being amplified to the point where people begin to see these bad decisions as a representation of what a good person is. Let's take a look at some of those bullet point descriptions that you give some of these people. Luke had been in commentary since the 15th of July 2020, and his video that called Peaches a beta came out the 6th of November 2020, not new to commentary. Luke was also the origin of the claims against Peaches about her baiting her so unless you can prove that someone else told him that privately and convince him to say that, you can't really say he wasn't thinking for himself. Secondly, Spockta claims the problem with Creepshow was her not being self-aware. I mean, being actively and maliciously dishonest seems to be a bit more of a pressing issue here, but go off. And third, Spockta describes Camilla Cuevas as aggressive and unable to let go. Yeah, that's what the problem is here. Not that she pretended to have a problem with things that Peaches and Camilla had already resolved for the sake of having something to say to jump on the bandwagon. Her dishonesty wasn't the problem. The problem was her aggressiveness. How are you missing the bigger picture this hard? But the worst part about all of this is the way Spock tries his hardest to appeal to both sides. The ones being reasonable and the angry hate mob. Keep in mind that Manga Kamen had already told Spock to everything that went down and let him know that Peaches was struggling in a situation where she was ultimately being villainized for no reason. But instead of doing what was right and what he built his entire channel on, he decided to placate Shannon instead. You can't point out flaws in Peaches' critics and then pretend that they don't exist or that they're way more understandable than what Peaches had to go through. Another way Spockta tried to pull the PR strings, so to speak, is with his response to Harley's video we mentioned before. This was a pretty important video to respond to given how it raised some pretty interesting evidence. Spockta is a content creator who covered this situation and the way he handled it genuinely angers me. In DMs with Peaches, he discusses how the evidence she provides him completely changes the narrative, then continues to make his video where he says in DMs with her that his video misses the mark and doesn't defend her at all, where he says that he has to go after her for the sake of PR. And I want to pose the question to you, Spockta. If you're in commentary not to discuss your own thoughts on something, but to provide the most PR appropriate response, maybe you should reconsider your reasons for being in commentary. I'm here, a small channel, going against tons of huge creators, with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, speaking my mind. I know someone with a platform as large as you can do the same. But you haven't. It seems you genuinely don't care about doing the right thing in commentary. You've got comfortable just sitting by the sidelines and saying the most popular opinion so that you can coast off free views and subscribers, which is unacceptable when you're handling situations that affect people's real livelihoods. The fact you claim so heavily in your video that you were trying to humanize her while behind the scenes are doing the exact opposite comes across as you playing the role without acting the part. I hope you learned from this. I used to look up to you. I no longer do. So Spockta said himself the evidence that Peaches gave him about Camilla vastly changed the narrative, and then he admits to being the top dollar PR agent that he is instead of doing what was right. So how does Spockta go about responding to this? 
believe it or not, there are people who didn't like my Hopeless Peaches video. Some of the people were irrational opinion holders, such as the idea that I went too soft on Peaches. I don't believe I did, in fact, I believe the opposite. However, there's a video that's been released that's helped me reflect on my moral opinions regarding the situation. A video released by Harley TBS, a YouTuber who got involved in this around a month ago. Spockter is a content creator who covered this situation, and the way he handled it genuinely angers me. In DMs with Peaches, he discusses how the evidence she provides him completely changes the narrative, then continues to make his video, where he says in DMs with her that his video misses the mark and doesn't defend her at all, where he says that he has to go after her for the sake of PR. And I want to post a question to you, Spockter. If you're in commentary, not to discuss your own thoughts on something, but to provide the most PR appropriate response, maybe you should reconsider your reasons for being in commentary. Now, what you're saying in this video would be a very valid point on me if the context behind my wording wasn't misrepresented so strongly. In the first screenshot you provide, I explained that the narrative that was given to me had changed drastically. In the screenshot, we talked about compensation, a situation that I brought up in my previous video regarding Peaches and Camilla Cuevas, where I criticized Camilla for failing to properly have a conversation with Peaches about selling their collaborative work. That she did have permission to sell the posters based on um this screenshot here, where they like briefly mentioned it for a little bit. Is that it? Like an exchange of ideas? It appears here that nothing was actually set in stone. Especially after seeing this screenshot, I'd imagine if you were attempting to make monetary gain off the poster, you would at least give a lot more discussion into the matter. You didn't provide any further discussion on how you guys would sell the poster, and I'm very confused as to why Peaches would get a lot of slack for feeling like she's been wronged for a creator trying to sell off her work without partial compensation. The narrative that Camilla had actually talked to Peaches was ultimately fractured, and Peaches came to me with information basically proving that they never had a proper conversation to on that. And that narrative that changed was the narrative that Camilla had permission to sell her work, when in reality, Peaches had no idea that Camilla was doing it. To which I responded, you shouldn't play with money like that. I proceeded to include this new narrative in my video to criticize Camilla. Nowhere to leave, leave it out of my vid. I spoke my mind in my video. I said everything I wanted to say regarding the entire situation. A lot of the stuff I actually left out was regarding Creepshow and her general handling of the situation. I believe that personally, and I've told her this personally as well, criticism and speaking your mind publicly has no substantial merit if you can't back what you're saying with some kind of physical demonstration of what someone has done. I will trust my friends, but I'll take what they say with a grain of salt without the proper evidence, specifically and especially in an environment like this. And me and Creepshow are buddies, and I want to trust her word, but at the same time, I don't want to wish and ber sit I want to sit and berate her experience based on the idea that she has no evidence, and I don't want to sit there and berate Peaches for something that has no evidence. Therefore, a lot of the situation behind Peaches and Creepshow I entirely left out of my video. This was my PR move. And I believe that it's inherently important to only speak on things you absolutely have 100% confidence on. I believe it's important to only speak on things to a large platform to which you have complete confidence in your analysis. I'm not really sure why Spock to put so much emphasis on the Camilla section of the video. What does this have to do with the fact that you withheld information to save your ass? It's insane that people watched this video, saw this point specifically, and said, yeah, this is fine. He didn't even respond to the actual issue. What is happening? On top of that, I'm not gonna let you slip away saying that holding your tongue on some elements of the situation surrounding Creep Show was your PR move. Despite the fact that you admitted to Peaches that being too nice to her would be bad branding, your PR move was giving Peaches a lot more grief in your video than the situation called for. Speaking of, that PR attitude seems to continue as you pull a pretty interesting stunt when giving your view on Harley's pretty reasonable critique of you. I'm here, a small channel, going against tons of huge creators with hundreds of thousands of subscribers speaking my mind. I know someone with a platform as large as you can do the same. But you haven't. It seems you genuinely don't care about doing the right thing in commentary. You've got comfortable just sitting by the sidelines and saying the most popular opinion so that you can coast off free views and subscribers, which is unacceptable when you're handling situations that affect people's real livelihoods. The fact you claim so heavily in your video that you were trying to humanize her, while behind the scenes are doing the exact opposite, comes across as you playing the role without acting the part. I hope you learn from this. I used to look up to you. I no longer do. What? Okay. So this small interaction between me and Peaches caused you to say all of that? <laughs> Are you okay? The amount of people I managed to influence into looking at the other side and giving Peaches the benefit of the doubt, which was definitely my intention of that video, and now I'm being told I haven't done enough. I did what I was confident with. I wanted to make a video without mindless baffling and mindless anger, mindless rage, and without misunderstood ideas and untrustworthy sources, you know? I believed it produced an outcome that I felt was absolutely positive. Both parties watched my videos and came to build their own ideas and discuss their own thoughts and listen to other sides. I changed the minds of a lot of people. And from the beginning of this Hopeless Peaches situation, I did think it was stupid. I absolutely thought it was dumb. And I felt like Peaches didn't deserve what was given to her. And I wanted to try and step in and loosen the tension as best I could with what I had. And I didn't want to mindlessly defend someone who's hurt people through a lot of interpersonal interaction. Peaches has made mistakes too. And I reiterated that in my video, just as I did with the others. The only times I left stuff out was in a case of me not understanding the truth or in a me not understanding my own analysis. And I would much rather leave speculation out of my content when I can avoid doing so and stick to the things I can confidently speak on. Your reaction heavily feeds back into what I said around the start of this video. The minor mistaken wording I had in DMs with Peaches caused you to define my character as dis-
disingenuous as a leech, and it looks like you just have such a negative outlook on human beings. It, it could be extremely dangerous in the long run. I hate this line of thinking as well. Spock to saying that he managed to get a lot of people of Peter's back is true. However, you withhold evidence that would have painted the situation in a different light. That is still bad, and people can be pissed because you chose to do that. Spock to build his reputation on being this neutral party. If that persona is proven to be false the moment a drama is a little bit too toxic, then why would anyone trust or look up to you? It's funny because he tried to pull something similar in a Senate call. While this call is frankly too long to go into absolutely everything in it, the the single most notable part is this, cause if you're wondering why we've been so confident in the fact that Spockton knew that what he was saying was wrong, then here we go. And not only that, but I rewatched the videos as well, even just today, to mm -hmm. before coming into the call with you. And you said things that directly went against what I showed you, like, screenshot-wise. And then with, uh, Creep Show Up, um, I showed you screenshots as well, which showed that she was either, well, let's cut to the chase because we know who she is now she was just lying and i showed yeah. you proof that she was lying about stuff like literally just stuff that directly contradicted stuff and he didn't even consider that at all like your section of her section the most he said was she was a little emotional in her video you never said anything to do with you know the fact that she could be lying at all despite knowing that uh, i'm trying to recall things but I, I think yeah i think that lines up um, because if, if, because this isn't a case where I'm trying to catch you out, man, like, the, the, the catching out would have been the <laughs> messages of OPR and all that crap. What I'm asking yeah. is, like, you know, why? Because I'd rather have the, I'd uh, rather be honest and say, oh, I didn't care, or, oh, well, I'm friends with you, them, or you any really other. Want me to be honest? I, I would much rather you be honest because that's why I'm asking I mean, you. I guess I, like I said in the last call, I do have nothing to lose. I, uh, I... Yeah, just, it's a combination of like, oh, it's like, not really super directly related to my life. And also, I know Creepshow a little bit better than I knew you at the time, so I would take a buddy's word over yours. Would you take a friend's word over literal proof? If they're a friend, I like to hold their value. You know, the value of their words somewhat high. It's, it's just kind of how I operate. So this entire time, Spockton knew about Shannon straight up lying. He knew that Peters was getting flamed by a channel so much larger than her and actively chose to ignore that. Just because he holds his friend's words higher than literal proof. Yeah, I know you have video evidence of this guy killing someone, but he said he didn't, and I want to believe that lie instead of the truth. But if you thought we were done here, yeah, not even close. Junkie, junkie, junkie. <laughs> Someone who I never had any interest in back then, but that quickly changed after finding out everything he did. Lying to cover his ass, lying about others to cover his ass, and even ruining someone else's relationships with others because he trapped himself in a lie. He also miraculously is a scaly and is also involved in a very interesting call we'll be talking about later on. But first we should start with Spock's Junkie video. After how awful what Junkie did was, described in a video by Heat and Mitsuru, how do you think Spockter would respond to this? You wonder why people are trying to ruin one another in this community. It's because of this mindset that anger and wrath wins. Oh boy, you lied to people. To the gulag you go! Forget the good you did for people. Forget the fact that you basically built the foundation of my channel and helped me get on my feet, junkie. You lied about people, and someone decided to out you for it. It's time to crucify you and make you walk on eggshells. I mean, look at the video calling him out. I don't want your disingenuous, half-hearted, slimy, bitch boy apology. That's no way to treat people on a platform. Even if they've angered you, that aggression only serves to progress the issue. The amount of stress that you're putting on yourself by basically forcing yourself to get involved in with that much wrath is not worth the outcome. It's one thing when you cover a situation that's so far alienated from your personal life. It's another to cover shit that deals with your personal life. It's another to air your dirty laundry to an audience in a format that comes off uncalculated and disorganized. But I'm certainly not on Junkie's side here. The nerve of this man, good lord. So to recap what you just saw, Spockta just guilt-tripped Heaton for talking about something that left them with no one and left them to narrowly miss going onto a ward due to Junkie doing so much good for people. He acts like what Junkie did makes the ostracization from the community he faced a disproportionate response, somehow. And he tries to tone police Heaton by acting as if addressing Junkie in the way they did was not their place. Only to say, I'm not on Junkie's side here. I have no clue how anyone 
one could have a positive word to say about that. The extent that Spockter's toxic positivity goes is absolutely insufferable. You have absolutely no good reason to hold yourself highly when you treat Heaton addressing someone who has done what Junkie has like something you scrape off the back of your shoe, only to turn around and do what you can to appear neutral to make sure as few people get angry at you as possible for what you say. If you're going to be the insufferable scumbag that you are here, at least do it enough to not cower behind a facade of being the neutral party here. You are actively antagonizing Heaton for something they did that they were not in the wrong for doing. And we aren't even done here. Junkie's being outed by a small handful of creators, notably Jar, Heaton, Mind Your Business, and a few other people that have had experiences with the guy. Basically, he told a bunch of mini white lies about people, something like he gave people permission to share certain DMs in a video and then immediately lied about it when it got him in trouble, basically throwing someone else under the bus. Mini white lies is saying you donate to the Catholic Church every Sunday. What Junkie did was a little more than a little white lie, let me tell you. As stated before, Junkie got caught in a lie and ended up lying even harder to try and get out of it. This caused heat and a lot of grief. Multiple people dropped heat and due to what Junkie said, and that could be traumatizing. These lies weren't inconsequential, they were the very opposite, actually. And it somehow gets worse, as Spockter was eventually pulled aside into a call with a few other commentators who pushed him on this, only for him to do this. Definition-wise, it wouldn't be considered a white lie, because mm. there was that intent behind it because oh, hang on no now, you got, now you're making me look up the definition hang on okay. <laughs> oh harmless oh wait hang on i used the wrong word there yeah all right yeah okay like it, like i could see from an outsider perspective like in in actuality if we like divorce it from white lies was the opposite figure. no oh no i'm just i'm just stupid what the f hang on wow okay yeah okay yeah no white lies would not be the right uh word to use my bad <laughs> yeah no you're good you're good i figured I figured because a lot of- I thought white lies meant the opposite. Sorry, I'll call BS right here. I refuse to believe Spockter didn't know what he meant by the term mini white lie. The word mini is in it. How and why are you trying to literally rewrite history right now? And if you have any thought of this being where the stupidity in this call ends, yeah, not even close. Um, you know, like you, you kind of single around the context, okay. mm -hmm. especially with the context. I mentioned that the way that you, the way that you presented the video, right? Um, he kind of just ignores the context of what the situation is and more focusing on the tone. And I mentioned yeah, that, 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 that was kind of the point of the criticism, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that wasn't, uh, I wasn't trying to like make a big deal out of it, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes. So it looks like Spockter has more than comfortably entered the territory of just lying here at this point. As here, he seems to be banking on the idea of those he's talking to to just not have watched his video in a while. Heaton's tone when talking about Junkie was almost the entirety of what he was criticizing, only for him to turn around and act as if it wasn't too much of the main focus. Stop lying, Spockter. If you want a more in-depth dive into this call, you can check out Heaton's video that discusses it in more detail. If we went in any further detail, it would amount to us just saying, stop lying Spockter again and again and again. What we'll get into instead is that after Heaton dropped their video, Spockter kinda needed to say something. And so what did he do? He made a video where he spent over half the runtime complaining about me. There's this video that has been circling uh, called Spockter is a Problem, a video created by Lin Lin, a video that I take a small handful of issues with. I was gonna do this long-winded response where like I would respond to the claims made against me and say, oh well, you're misconstruing what I said, you don't understand, but I'm just gonna keep it short. I'm just gonna keep it short and stick to a few examples. Alright, I don't want this to take too much time here, as I have already made a video on my channel about this part of the situation, but to give the long story short of it, I made a video on Spockter a little bit before Heaton's video came out, and it was a big mistake for a laundry list of reasons. And I'm not gonna sit here and talk about how it wasn't worth criticizing. Whether it's intentional or not, spreading misinformation, as my video did amongst a list of other problems, is unacceptable. However, the problem lies with how Spockter spent like five times less time addressing Heaton than he did addressing me. I appreciate the fact that I deserve to be held accountable for what I did wrong, but using me and my mistake as a meat shield so that you can spend less time going in depth about what you actually did do wrong is frankly just cowardly. Drowning out your attempt of taking accountability isn't something you need to do to correct misinformation. This is why it ultimately comes across to me that I was being used so that Spockdog could frame the video with him in the more victimized position. After all, it's a lot easier to take pictures 
pity on someone who people are wrong about, right? This video had already pointed out how Spockter is not a man of the people, that he is a liar, that he's someone who will throw people under the bus for his friends, and worst of all, the fakest fence sitter I've ever seen. How could he sink even lower? Hold that thought for three seconds because I'll tell you right now. Leo Convoy is a person who is really good at what he does. No sarcasm or anything. I really think he's done a lot of good for communities for how hard he and his group work to run predators and other bad people off the internet. So when Leo tackled Spockter in a video, I knew it was over for him. TLDR, the first bit of Leo's video was saying a lot of what people were thinking but didn't want to say, along with releasing the Senate call Spockter had concerning peaches we mentioned before. But the Hail Mary finally dropped when Leo shown a call where Spockter admitted to to holding on to nudes of a minor past his 18th birthday. Hello. 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 Hi. What, what the f are you guys talking about? I. What are you get? <laughs> what are you getting at here? I, I don't know what I'm getting at. Uh, but like, I, I just kind of know what I'm getting at. Uh. <sighs> what? Just something that's bothering me. What's bothering you, dude? Like. You like, <laughs> you've known uh the the this girl. For what? Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Yeah, and like very early on, it was like <laughs> I, I think I first we we all first started talking to Spooter when she was tw like twelve. Twelve, thirteen, yeah. Twelve, thirteen. Yes. Oh, I see what this is about. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm. I want to know like the full story. Basically. You want to know the full story? Is that all this is about? Because yeah, that's, I, that's it. I really don't want this getting out because it's just a bunch of like that I want to move past because it's, I know. it's a mistake I, I made and I just I want to be able to move past it. I know. And uh, that's all this is because you guys, you guys know I'm a stupid idiot and I do horrible. Yes. But I'm not a pedo and I know I'm not. Yes, if if it's all for person, if it's only for personal reasons and you promise me that, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. yeah. It's just because, for personal reasons. Because, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was like 16 when we first met when we uh, around that time. She was 13. It's only a three-year age gap. Um, her and I, we had a, we had a friendship and we were very close friends. And so naturally, you know, because I was, you know, how I acted back then, there's this, this fling that started, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. And so, I mean, I don't know what kind of details you want specifically though. Like how long? It lasted? I'd say about a few, like, obviously since I was 16 and it ended when I was 17. Like a couple of years. It, well, not two, a couple of years. Like no, a, one year. <laughs> one year, yeah, because that's how math works. Yeah. Um. And like, did it get graphic? Anything? Did it get graphic? Yes. Uh, admittingly, yeah, but you know, like it's all gone. It's I, I don't want it anymore. I don't want to associate with it anymore. It's disgusting. That even I look back on and I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. You know, especially at like after I turned 18, I was like, I had the drive. It was like sitting on my counter and I looked at it and I was like, why do I still have this? <laughs> I am not a religious person, however, I am sure Spockter was talking to some higher power when he said this out loud with two crooked commentators. Like, this right here would be enough to kill a person's career on top of everything else that's happened. But even after everyone knew what Spockter had done, he still came in with a dog community tab post. I cannot believe you're doing this to me again. All of you. All of you are doing it again. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to defend myself again from things I couldn't in 2018. Spockter is not a monster. Spockter is not a pedo. The actual people involved of you, like Peaches, Lyo, etc, never once called you that from what I can recall. Lyo and Peaches are just as bad as Pentagon and Stories. They're taking a situation they don't understand and throwing so many falsities into it thinking they're correct. I'm not what they say I am. I think it's so funny that one of the last things Spockta ever did was rely on his past drama in such a horrible way. Peaches and Lyo are nothing like those two who lied about you because Lyo and Peaches have done nothing but be completely honest the entire time. Most of the evidence they used came directly from your mouth. I'm genuinely curious whether you are intentionally being oblivious or if you're just stupid. Maybe a little bit of both. And what's worse about this is something from Spockta's video on Junkie. When these people compare these extremely multifaceted situations to another quote Spock 
doctor situation, I just f laugh because it feels like none of you really understand why that situation even happened. Seems pretty interesting that Spockter will have a go at other people for comparing his situation to others, but when he makes the comparison to frame the conversation in a way that places himself in the victim role for things that Lyo and Peaches never said about him, he sees it to be okay. For a more in-depth breakdown of this community post, you can check out Peaches' video on it. But to close things out here, to avoid repeating myself over and over again, Spockter mentions in this post that he's gonna be leaving the internet. Rip bozo, good riddance. This is gonna come off as so surprising, but just like many other people who valiantly claim to be leaving the internet or YouTube or whatever, <laughs> What is there even left to say about Spock to that Leo and Peaches haven't already said? It's hard to really describe the frustration I feel when I talk about this dude because it's very rare someone is actually able to thrive after nearly having his career ended by false accusations. Rare still to see so many people willing to defend and look past his mistakes time and time again, no matter how huge they were. I expect a bunch of randoms to not really pay attention to what he says and just agree, but multiple creators doing the same thing is a little confusing to me. I know Spock Tro isn't watching this video, but I'm desperately hoping he never comes back. Thanks for watching the video! Gotta give a special thanks to Alec the Shark, Anchi Kiara, The King Johnny TH445, Ant, Pwep, Sabin, Oliver, Necotro Official, Grizzly Bear 1996, Kinda Snowy, Clap Seal, and Alien Hunter. I gotta appreciate the $5 members as their extra money really does help. Special thanks to Lynn for basically carrying this video too. She really put the work in and all of you should subscribe to her just for that. She also has the border orange stamp of approval, which basically means nothing, but she has it. I hope everyone watching this video has a good day. See ya, lads. Oh,